are listening to Athleisure Kitchen, where you'll get the inside scoop with those in the culinary world from celebrity chefs, food personalities, restaurateurs, and more. I'm your host, Kimmy Smith of Athleisure Mag, so set an extra plate as we chat all things culinary. On today's episode of Athleisure Kitchen, we share an organization that we have covered a number of times over at Athleisure Mag and is in the November issue we dropped last month. We have enjoyed sharing initiatives that No Kid Hungry creates in order to ensure that childhood hunger is not an issue that has to be a concern in this country. In the past, we have interviewed Brian Voltaggio and Duff Goldman, both who have participated in a fundraising event known as Chef Cycle. We have also covered the spatulas that include the creativity of various celebs, food personalities, and chefs that are sold at Williams Sonoma. Right before the holidays, we caught up with No Kid Hungry's Jenny Dirksen, who is the National Director of Champion Engagement, and Chef Elizabeth Faulkner to talk about a variety of programs that No Kid Hungry is involved in throughout the year. Of course, with holiday festivities underway, we delve into what we will find on their dinner tables this year. This episode was recorded at one of Athleisure Kitchen's favorite whiskey destinations, the Flatiron Room, right here in NYC. I've seen you on a number of TV shows, either competing or judging, culinary events. We just saw you at Star Chefs a few weekends ago. You know, can you tell the readers and the listeners the moment you realized you wanted to cook? Um, I mean, I never thought about cooking as a culinary profession mm-hmm. until I was uh, living in San Francisco and going to art school and working at Williams and Elma part time. Nice. And then, uh, really, because the whole sort of what is now called the California Food Revolution was happening all around me. So it felt like an art and political and everything kind of movement just because there were a handful of mostly female chefs really like getting all the agriculture sort of um, more exciting, more interesting product, um, more farm to table kind of stuff Mm -hmm. way back in like about 30 years ago. Wow. So it just kind of swooped me up. Wow. That's crazy. And what was the moment you realized you wanted to be in the culinary field? You have an amazing background from doing cooking, but then also being in the managerial roles. Like, can you tell us about that? Uh, I mean, I grew up loving food, loving mostly to eat. (laughs) Um, I I took on self-imposed vegetarianism when I was 12 and really educated myself about nutrition and started making my own meals. I don't think it was until college that I even understood you could make a profession of that. I was working as a barista in heyday, which is no more, but like a a Dean and DeLuca, which is also no more. Um, But I watched the folks working, they were all dudes, Mm -hmm. um, in the prepared foods part, and I thought, how did you get to do that? Mm -hmm. Um, And and that was the beginning of it for me. Um, And I, I I did cook for a few years before I chickened out and went over to the office side of the world. <laughs> so I wouldn't call it just chickening out. You probably just said, okay, that's not for me. I want to do something else. Do something now. else. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I had actually injured my back and I was like, I'm not capable of standing up at my station right now, chef. Oh, Lord. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a little break. So I had the opportunity to work in the office of the restaurant, not realizing how much fun mm-hmm. that would be to support everyone that was delighting the guests all day long. Um, and through that had the opportunity to move into the executive office where I spent a good chunk of time and learned that restaurants and chefs can create social change and that was the coolest to me. Wow I mean I I love that and that's so exciting so how do you define your style of cooking I mean you do sweet and savory I mean that's one of the things I love about you that you're so versatile how do you define like this is my style? Well first of all I don't like to be stereotyped so um and that just is that's just part of who I am Mm -hmm. and I love um exploring everything through the medium of food and to me um, food is a lot like learning languages Mm -hmm. and I really am just interested in storytelling as Mm -hmm. food kind of evolves um, in different places and at different times Mm -hmm. so um, I think of my style as just much more explorative than any sort of specific Mm -hmm. genre or ethnicity I really like exploring everything and the more things that I don't know the more I want to know Mm -hmm. about them Wow and as the national director of champion engagement at No Kid Hungry, tell us about the culinary background in terms of what led, I mean, you already told us what led you to No Kid Hungry, but what is your role in this particular position? 
So I am really fortunate. Uh, I work alongside of uh, our entire team that is engaging chefs through culinary events. So all of the ways that chefs help us to fundraise for the work itself, mm -hmm. Taste of the Nation, so a broad scale tasting event, No Kid Hungry Dinners, sometimes they're intimate, sometimes they're galas, Chef Cycle. Um, and we're able to take all of these culinary professionals who have worked with us to fundraise and then say, hey, do you want to come to Capitol Hill? and actually meet with your legislators and talk about what you're fundraising for. Maybe ask them mm -hmm. for a legislative change or appropriations to support legislation we're really enthusiastic about. Mm -hmm. Would you like to lend your voice to media and tell others what we're doing? Um, come see the work up close. We bring them into schools to be able to learn more about how that functions. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also am in regular touch with our most engaged culinary professionals like Elizabeth mm -hmm. to let them know what we're up to. There is so much nitty gritty in the work. Mm -hmm. um, and those who say, I really want to know all the details we're trying to get that message out to. What we want to do is create a community of caring individuals who are passionate about ending childhood hunger. And, and through doing that, they help us to grow and come up with new fundraising platforms and also new ways of getting the actual work done. Wow. So how did you decide you wanted to be a part of this organization? Well, it's a couple things. So I've, um, I've been cooking for a long time, and I have done events with No Kid Hungry and Share Our Strength many years ago when, like, kind of, I think, when it first started. Before um, No Kid Hungry, even. On the cooking side of mm -hmm. things. So I do a lot of charity events still, even though I don't work in restaurants full time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just because I really feel like chefs have this power to um, influence and also um, just cook, raise dollars, raise mm -hmm. awareness um, for for really a lot of different things like, like No Kid Hungry. And... So Chef Cycle is something I've been wanting to do, uh, but I used to, I was running half marathons in the New York Marathon mm -hmm. um, 2016, and I was like, how am I going to do both? I was, you know, raising money for Team for Kids, because I like kids to exercise yeah. too. And then, um, and then finally, so like last year after I ran three half marathons, my, oh my um, one of my doctors was like, I don't think you should probably run as much. I'm like, great, I'll sign up for Chef Cycle. <laughs> it's time to do cycling. So um, that's kind of how it started. But then it's, it just, I did it this year and it was such a great event. Mm -hmm. um, because of that, that it's not the simple sort of thing to train for. I mean, right. riding 300 miles is mm -hmm. no joke. And, um, and training for that is no joke. Uh -huh. And uh, so I just, I, I like the whole idea that I'm not, I, I still like to cook mm -hmm. for these kind of events, but to do something athletic um, that's way out of my comfort zone is also just, I, I think, really a good message for how important it is, but also a good message for chefs to do something like that. Um, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that's always telling other cooks uh, and people in general mm -hmm. that, you know, being aware of what you're eating and also what you're physically doing is going to yeah. help you in the longevity of wow. your career. I mean, so how do you train for that? <laughs> I mean, 300. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what, what's really cool this year for when we do the ride in um, Bend, Oregon, uh, next June, mm. is that we've I've, we formed a team. Um, Adele from from No Kid Hungry uh, connected me with Jess Sarah, who's a mm. professional cyclist yeah. who just retired. Yeah, and, um, wow. So she's like, we like decided to form a team. We came up with the name Team Themyscira because Themyscira is where Wonder Woman's from. Mm -hmm. And um, so with the focus of like. You know, it's not exclusively a team for women, but the focus is to get more women in cycling. Uh, Stephanie Izard is, is writing also, and she just texted me yesterday and said, can men participate in this? And I was like, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but um, I'm like, we're not sexist. So, uh, you know, it's but it's a team about with a bunch of really great women. Um, all Some of them are, you know, have done this race before. Hillary Sterling said, uh, she just said, hey, I'm going to be riding. Promise, and I said, yeah. oh, you got to sign up for our team. And so anyway, we have a, you know, everybody's, Dusky's going to ride. She's already signed up. So we've got a, a bunch of really great people wow, already on the team. Wow, you got some rock star team. Wow. Yeah. And what's cool is we have the um, a couple of uh, professional cyclists now on the team, yeah. too, that are like, and across just, the board. They're just kind of here to um, not turn us into <laughs> professional cyclists. The cyclists are like, oh, it's so cool that I get to hang out with chefs all right. day. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're, like, already giving us, you know, tips and uh, training if we want it and stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm like... Like, I didn't know that you shouldn't wear underwear underneath your shorts. Yep, you learned that real quick. <laughs> I was like, thanks, I needed to know that actually this year. <laughs> oh my gosh, so I mean, what do you do once you're done with that? Do you just let your body be incapacitated for like two days? Like, I mean, that's just a lot. Of, I can't envision that in my head. No, no, it's so, in, by the time you've trained for it, you mm -hmm. know, you've already like so amped up for it. Like this year, 
um, in Santa Rosa. It was beautiful. Well, it was like nice the first day. Then it rained the second two days. Oh. But and so the second day, and I was actually really scared to ride in the rain. It's something I'm I'm not really done. That's why I said oh. <laughs> and uh, but I was like, well, I've just got to try it. And if it feels scary, then I'll stop. Well, we went, ended up riding the whole day. And then except for oh, I I met this woman from Canada who had a um, she got a flat like sort of maybe halfway through the day so then we came back and that was fine because it was freezing mm-hmm. we went out and bought rain gear and then by the third day we were just maniacs in the rain so we didn't really care we were just like <laughs> ah riding along <laughs> just pouring rain <laughs> but it's just like the camaraderie is so much fun and then everybody's like just very supportive mm-hmm. and uh, it's just a really it's a great event so how much money did you raise this past year I don't know the year by year count I right. know that since we've started we've raised 2.5 million dollars from that ride wow That's four rides and five rides under our belt yeah that's amazing. Yeah, and uh, like I raised, I think eighty five hundred uh, wow. last year. So mm-hmm. shooting for at least that this year. That's, I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, how do you decide these are the chefs we're going to bring into the program? Like, how, what is your job like from that standpoint? Well, I again, I'm so fortunate to have started at this organization as they were 20 years in. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were a wealth of chefs already taking mm-hmm. part. My old boss, Danny Meyer, had been on their board for years and years. And, mm-hmm. and, and knowing people through No Kid Hungry had already been a connection yeah. point for me professionally. Uh, the answer is uh, we're very lucky that a lot of folks come to us because they've heard about the great work. A lot of folks come through other chefs, so Elizabeth will say, I did this ride, it was crazy, you gotta do it too. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes we're branching into a market maybe where we haven't been before. I'll ask the chefs we work with who they know. We'll do some reading. We're not looking, I mean, we are thrilled to have chefs who have been reviewed and won Mm -hmm. awards, but that is not the starting line. I just want people who are passionate about food and passionate about feeding others and excited to make a difference then those are our people. So non-chefs could also participate in No Kid Hungry. We, so the, oh, abs- everyone has a role in ending childhood hunger. For my mm-hmm. specific mm-hmm. work, we talk about engaging culinary professionals because there's front of house and there are mm-hmm. beverage folks and there are the office types and everyone is still involved with making restaurants an exciting place and making eating a lot of fun. We want all of those folks working with us. Wow. Well, with Thanksgiving being a few days away, and I know you guys do things year round, what are the initiatives that are happening right now that are like things that our readers and listeners need to know about. So the Tuesday after Thanksgiving is called Giving Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's a really big day for charitable giving, uh, both in person and online. So that's December 3rd this year. Um, Listeners can go to nokidhungry.org and see everything we're doing or follow us online at at nokidhungry. But I think two things that will be especially interesting for Mm -hmm. your listeners um, are the generous community at Food 52 is going to, um, is benefiting us or their work is benefiting us through their Food 52 holiday swap which is something they've had going on for years wow. you bake something you send it to someone else and they help sort of match make between the bakers mm-hmm. but everyone makes a contribution to be involved right um, and so that is all happening at food52.com and this year we are benefiting from a really fun holiday auction that Bon Appetit is doing they issue a bunch of different um, covers to go with the November issue ah. you can collect them all nice. so to do that you go to eBay for charity and uh, search for no kid hungry on that web page Wow, that's a lot. And are there initiatives that are also focused on Christmas time? Like... I think end of year giving is the mm-hmm. big the big mm-hmm. push at that point. Um, and then throughout the year, we have these incredible culinary events that we've mentioned, Taste of the Nation and our New Kid Hungry dinners. Those uh, listeners can learn more about by visiting events.nokidhungry.org. Um, and of course, Chef Cycle. And we, we look for folks to make a contribution, support their favorite chefs. That's all happening at chefcycle.org. Yeah, you can just support a writer on, yeah. the, on the website or a team. That's fantastic. Team right. For example, <laughs> just, picking. Just, just in case you wanted to know of one team in particular, that I that's amazing. You know, when I look at you as a chef and, and always seeing you out there on social media and different things like that, how important that is for chefs to be out there in the TV space and constantly being at, you know, uh, charity functions, different things like that. Is that very important to chefs that are going through their careers? I mean, I don't think it's like a, I, I, I don't think of a chef as having to do stuff like that. I mean, mm-hmm. some people might think that you have to, to be successful. Mm-hmm. I think it depends on where you are, but a lot of chefs I know are hardworking in their kitchen and they don't have time to do a, a ton of stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's a negative. I think that probably see it in their food. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> you put that much more work in the kitchen, it's going to show. Right. Um, but, I mean, I think it's great when people are, you know, showing stuff on... I think the the power of social media is just amazing with mm-hmm. food stuff, just to see what people are doing. Absolutely. Around the world. Do you envision that you will open another restaurant? Uh, it's not my goal to open another restaurant. I've already done that for a good chunk of my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not that it's too hard work for me. It's just I'm so involved in more um, food policy and food waste. I talk a lot about um, helping kids, uh, teaching. I just I end up, like, teaching a lot more, speaking a lot mm. more about all the different issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm constantly doing recipe development. I don't even know how I would right. have another restaurant at this mm-hmm. point in my life just because I'm quite busy. <laughs> it's a nice thing. Yeah. Well, so there's we think, a lot to do outside of well, the Well, there's a lot to do. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I'm always on your feet. I'm like, she is constantly someplace talking, being someplace, educating. Like, it's fantastic. Very but, cool. I mean, that's what I've learned a lot from the food business, too. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, you can do that in this sort of what I think of as like a theater, a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can also, it can you can take it on the road these days. You know, I ended up I ended up cooking in China this year. And I've, wow. been, I've just been to so many places. And I cook at all these different events in different places. And mm-hmm. I actually really like using ingredients from different parts of the world, too, because that helps me, you know, change it up. So what are your three favorite ingredients to have on hand? Oh, my goodness. I have, like, well, I have to have olive oil that's just sort of like that's a critical one mm-hmm. um, I'm in love with the it changes because I'm in love with um, some things that I experienced in in um, Asia mm-hmm. so I came back loving this broad bean fermented broad bean paste which mm. is slightly like the fermented black beans Chinese black beans mm-hmm. but it's um, more like fava beans but it's a fermented spicy mm-hmm. Chinese Sichuan specialty that's in like uh, mapo dofu for example mm-hmm. I love that kind of stuff wow um I have like an obsession with Chinese food. That makes me hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> I, I literally can see you salivating. Like, Hold on, let me just swallow that real quick. Um, and then let's see. I also I think having Meyer lemons is kind of one of my favorite I'm ingredients. With Meyer lemons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just I'm from California, um, and I, I I need that little. Uh, it's more about the zest yeah. than anything. But mm-hmm. I, I love citrus, and I still try to you know speckle it into my food wherever I am. Wow. And what are your three favorite ingredients you like to cook with? Um, I'm a big stock person. My mm-hmm. slow cooker is always going with chicken stock. I, I just feel like it boosts us. Um, ginger, mm-hmm. right? So so good. External, internal, uh, revving up. And then right right now, mm-hmm. cardamom is so holiday yeah. to me. I, I really, yeah. I love things. cardamom. Yeah. So what is on your Thanksgiving dinner uh, list for this year? Um, you know, it's so funny. I'm doing, well, I'm making breakfast for my brother and his girlfriend for Thanksgiving. Aww. And then they're going to go to her parents' house, which I love going to because she's um, Korean-American and her mm-hmm. mom's are, her mom is a really good cook. And I went there last year mm-hmm. and had sort of a cross of some um, classic Thanksgiving dishes, but also so many great Korean dishes. And I was mm-hmm. like, I think I like all the Korean food better. <laughs> um and so I, and then I'm also just working on a project right now and I don't have time to really spend around Thanksgiving mm-hmm. so much. So I think I'm probably going to make more Chinese food <laughs> actually for <laughs> breakfast. You're like, yes. <laughs> And what can we expect at your dinner? Um, I am actually getting together with a neighbor tomorrow nice. evening. We're, we're cooking together, so we're going to brainstorm our menu. But lots of everything that's happening at the Green Market. I have one of those mega Brussels sprout branches right now where actually oh, the top yeah. sprouts are so grown. They look like choy. They're just these huge mm. leaves. Yeah. Um, so it's got to be that. So the, mm-hmm. the farmer actually told me that he's had people taking it and slow roasting it whole with the stalk in the oven. Wow. I'm very curious. Might need to uh-huh. go there. Um, mm. You know, lots of squash. I love a red curry squash. Mm-hmm. Those good things. There'll be turkey. There'll be pie. It'll See, be I feel like it's um, unfortunately kind of all put on one day. Right. Which, which is not really how I think about this time of year. I mm-hmm. always think like, oh, Thanksgiving it lasts like from, you know, October till through December because it's just all about this harvest. Yeah. 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 I, to- I totally agree. I mean, coming from the Midwest, um, we would literally have this massive meal and then find other ways to reconstitute it for the next like 25 days, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. which toward, you know, day 23, you were kind of like, all right, we're ready for like <laughs> something new. There's only so many ways you can have a hand. Um, so is there anything else that you want to share with us about projects that are coming up or anything else? like that 
I would want everyone listening to know that, as I said before, everyone has a strength to share in the fight against hunger. There are so many ways to get involved and make a difference. Um, You can certainly donate online, but you can host a bake sale or a personal fundraiser for No Kid Hungry. You can attend these events. You can find opportunities to speak up on behalf of kids in your own community by writing your elected officials. And again, all of that information is on nokidhungry.org. Wow. And Chef, anything you want to share with anyone? Um, I just want to say that, like, any every dollar helps. Yeah. And it helps feed a lot of kids. And I don't feel like kids should uh, be hungry, especially going to school or in summer programs. Um, it just, how are you going to, you know, think and do all the work it takes just to be a kid at school mm-hmm. if you're not, if you're hungry. Absolutely. Elizabeth is right. For every dollar that No Kid Hungry receives, we can help to connect a kid with up to 10 meals. wait to sit with you again to share another great story with you at Athleisure Kitchen. Athleisure Kitchen is a part of Athleisure Studio, our multimedia podcast network, which is a division of Athleisure Media, and whose sister site is Athleisure Mag. Get the latest episode by listening, following, and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Premium, Himalaya, or your preferred podcast platform. Find out additional information by checking out the show notes. You can stay in the loop on who future guests are by visiting us at athleisurestudio.com backslash athleisure kitchen and on instagram at athleisure kitchen and at athleisure studio i'm your host kimmy smith athleisure kitchen is executive produced by paul farkas and myself and is mixed by the team at athleisure studio we'll be back with another episode so make sure that you set an extra plate for us